Hey there, New Mexico. Dave in here, your Santa Fe guy. And uh, today, I'm taking a drive up to the Hamas Hot Springs. Some of you uh, may have been to the Hamas Hot Springs. Many of you probably have not. It's kind of a, kind of a well-kept local secret. I mean, people people know about it, of course, but um, a lot of people don't know how exactly to get to the springs. And I'm not going to show you how to get to the springs, <laughs> but uh, I am going to show you what the springs look like. So stick with me and let's get going. You're hanging with Davini. So dead ahead there, those are the Hamas Mountains. The Hamas Mountains looked a lot different when I was a kid. Uh, they were covered with trees. There's still a lot of trees up there, but not nearly as many as there was when I was a kid. I think that's due to global warming. You can uh, draw your own conclusions. And uh, on our way up to the hot springs, we're going to drive through White Rock. So uh, I might show you a little bit of that. You can see probably ahead of us those low mesas there ahead of us, which are actually huge mesas. And they're kind of white in color. And I guess that's why they call it White Rock, because there's a lot of white rocks up there. Now we are approaching uh, the Rio Grande. You can see those cottonwoods ahead, all that greenery. That's the Rio Grande. I'm gonna drive over it. So I thought I'd just stop real quickly here at the river and uh, give you a look at it. This area is kind of interesting. Uh, so let's walk down here. I'll walk down here to the river. There are some uh, kind of ruins here to my left. This is uh, Pueblo land. It's no trespassing. Uh, and they're serious about it. They really uh, want you to stay off their land and um, and I respect that, and I think everybody should. Interesting. Some of these buildings are real old, and some of them are not so old. Uh, this one here, for instance, it's pretty old. I don't know, maybe it was an old well or something well house pretty tiny uh, it's hard to say what it was used for I think it's a well house uh, it has those characteristics let's check out the river here so so I'm not going to go across that fence but uh, there's the Rio Grande And it looks like the Pueblo is doing some work here. Doing some kind of construction project, probably water diversion. kind of a beautiful area.
No, there's really not much happening uh, in White Rock. Uh, it's a very small town. But uh, I did stop and uh, just got, you know, some cold drinks, a little water, some tea. There are some great hiking trails around here and uh, mountain biking trails. And I do have my mountain bike in the back of the truck. I think this is some of the most beautiful country in the world. Uh, just amazing rock formations here. And uh, just beautiful mountains. Uh, it's easy to see why um, ancient people uh, settled here because uh, these rock formations lend themselves really easily to habitation. There's all these little kind of natural caves everywhere uh, that are just about the right size to fit a few people or a person, family of people. And uh, that's why Bandelier National Monument is here. Um, it's all around us, basically. And uh, if you ever get a chance to visit it, I think it's it's really an amazing thing to see. The reason I haven't published a video in a while is because uh, I. Uh, had a really bad like allergic reaction or something uh, I, I'm not sure to what I think it might have been uh, my truck actually uh, the headliner and my truck was falling down so I tore it all out and I think uh, that, that little orange foam stuff was falling down on me and I was breathing it and uh, I think that's uh, what caused the allergic reaction I don't know, but I had to go to the emergency room and they gave me, you know, like some stuff to take to make it go away. And I'm sure glad because it was, it was really bad. Uh, it's the kind of thing that just uh, hives. It makes you want to die. <laughs> it's really bad. Anyway, I'm feeling better now. And uh, so, uh, and I've been busy too. Uh, working uh, for some attorneys, helping them out with some stuff, so, uh, you know, um, <clears throat> just haven't had as much time uh, lately, but uh, it's the weekend, and I've got time now to, uh, to have an adventure. This area right in here is just really amazing. You see what I'm talking about all those little holes in the rocks and many of them are large enough to fit a human or a family of humans I'm just gonna pull over here real quick and let's take a look Isn't that amazing? All right, I see a little cave here, so let's just go up here and take a look at it. Oh yeah, you can definitely see evidence of human habitation here. Someone lived here. So you see these divots here in the rock. Uh, 
they carved these little divots into the rock and then they put uh, latias or uh, you know branches uh, in in there uh, and then they would have had some kind of uh, another support uh, that they probably dug some post holes or whatever and make a little structure uh, that they can kind of uh, you know climb into and live in and you can see there's sort of a network of caves here formed by the bubbles in uh, in this material uh, there's a lot of erosion um, so it probably looks a lot different now than it did a hundred you know six hundred uh, two thousand years ago when people were living here here is a great example of some stonework they did uh, you can see the stone and the mortar I can even see some fingerprints right there. Actual fingerprints of the builder in the clay. And uh, so they built off uh, the rock face here, a uh, stone wall with uh, brick and mortar. And there it is. Here we get a closer look at the cave. You can see the soot in that little bubble there. That's where they kept a fire, keep their habitation warm. It's been a lot of erosion, uh, but they would have climbed up into that cave and then uh, probably might have enhanced the, the face of the cave a little to close it in. Here's a really good example of a cave. And uh, let's just take a peek inside of it here. And uh, it's all sooty on the walls. Wow, there's a really interesting uh, image there carved into the wall. I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but uh, there's definitely like a, you know, a being or a face there. Oh, that's a little better. You can see it now. There it is. Beautiful. Wow, that's just really amazing. The Anasazi speaking to us from the past. They loved to um, carve these little nichos into the back of their habitations where they presumably stored things or stashed their valuables. Probably mostly food and uh, whatever other supplies they, they used. And, uh, there's a whole other network of caves here right next door. You know, it just runs all the way along the mesa. This one's pretty cool. It had its own little chimney to let the smoke out. Uh, this must have been a pretty elaborate habitation or network of caves before it eroded. And a lot of them had multiple rooms, you know, that were connected. There's another one with a chimney. Anyway, we're going to continue on up the mountain. Yeah, really, and get an idea 
of what I was talking about as far as tree loss right here if you look at those mountains missing some trees that used to be there up on those hills I remember when the fires started back in the late 90s uh, you could see the flames from Santa Fe from my porch at sunset this is a pretty steep climb some pretty rough road as we climb up the mountain get some great views if you're not driving uh, off the side used to be forest and now the forest is gone Welcome to the Valle Grande, an ancient caldera, one of the largest in the world, inactive volcano, although it is active, that's why we have hot springs here. And I think that little uh, island sort of you see there in the distance would have been uh, sort of the you know, uh, I, I guess the geological center or, the, or I guess the, the volcanic center of the caldera, probably. There's a ranch down there. And uh, this land was privately owned uh, for generations, and I believe... Only recently, uh, ownership was transferred to, I think, the state of New Mexico. Or maybe the Bureau of Land Management. I I'm not sure, actually. You can see the fire damage everywhere. This all used to be forested mountains, and uh, now they're pretty much bare. Here's another view of the caldera. Imagine all this was once just a big sea of lava. The whole top of the mountain blew off. Apparently, the mountain is only two-thirds of the size it was before it blew its top. I've heard it said, uh, I think I read somewhere, I can't be sure if it's true, that um, when it blew its top, some of the rocks uh, went into partial orbit and came down in China. They have found rocks from this mountain in China. The serious loss of trees. When I was a kid, this was all forested. And now it's all burned up. Yeah. 
And here we are. Hot springs are up there. Before you can hike up to the hot springs, you have to hike down to the river. Back in the 60s, the late 60s, this was a really popular place for hippies to come. But I remember when I was a little, little kid, my mom bringing me here, and there must have been 50 people up here just having a huge party around the hot springs. And we came up here and stayed all night in the hot springs, you know, watched the sun come up, came back down the next day. When I was a kid, there was just this big slippery log you had to walk across. But now there is a bridge. I guess this would be the Hamas River. And as I cross the bridge here, we see our first sign of the springs. And uh, this lush green area is where the springs come trickling down the mountain. This is actually warm water from the hot springs. And we got to climb way up there. And uh, so the hot springs aren't that hard to find. If you just follow the wet river, you're kind of hiking up this little path of wetness coming out of the mountain. The rock formations around here are really incredible. I don't know about you guys, but I see faces in the rock.
Look at that, wild strawberries. Wild strawberries grow all over these mountains. I can actually see my truck from here. Can't zoom past the tree, I guess. While, um, you know, you're not supposed to camp here, but there's all these places you could go up there and hide in the rocks. Uh, this is kind of the general area around the springs where people hang out the most. If you did try to camp out here, um, you'd have to leave your car pretty far because if they find it in the parking lot, it'll get towed overnight. Uh, or have someone drop you off or hitchhike up here, something like that. Well, we started to get a few drops of rain up here. So I put the FC300 away and decided just to use my phone here. Had lunch, had a, just fruit, some fruit and a piece of bread up here. And some strawberries. So, this is what's left of that. And, uh, just sitting here looking out at the view at the moment. The water in the hot springs is usually not hot enough for me, but... Maybe I'll go feel it. <laughs> it hasn't been hot enough in about 12 years for me. It used to be a lot hotter when I was a kid. The temperature of the volcano fluctuates, I guess. Anyway. Um, pretty quiet day. Not a lot of people up here. And I'm glad we're getting some clouds. It kind of cools things off. And a few drops of rain never hurts in New Mexico. We're always glad to have rain. Well, uh, it was really quiet up here. And like a ton of people showed up. A bunch of kids and everything. So, um, the hot springs are overrun right now. Um, and I have, you know, I think it's usually like that here. Uh, they just, you know, they become, it's become a very popular spot. And uh, a lot of people come here from Albuquerque and stuff. So, um... Yeah, I guess I'm going to pack it up and go home. I'd uh, like to get more shots around the springs and stuff, but um, I don't like to invade people's privacy too much, you know, when they're trying to um, bathe and recreate. Uh, but uh, then I just have to blur out their faces and stuff, especially if they have kids. So, uh, I'm just going to head down the mountain, I guess. Well, that sounds promising. Time to pack it up, I think. Okay. 
camera in my backpack to give it a little more protection. And the rest of my equipment. And get the heck out of here. coming down really hard. shelter not much but better than nothing let's see here uh, where can I set you guys up uh, about uh, I just put you right there for now all right and, uh, yeah it's not much it's not even a cave it's just an overhang here but uh, there is a little place here, a little fire pit, where I could build a tiny fire if I needed to stay warm. Uh, put my equipment here where it'll stay dry. we are uh, you know it's a thunderstorm so there's some danger of lightning uh, a little chilly so I'm going to use this towel to help keep my body heat in uh, and uh now I'm worried my phone's going to get wet, so I'm going to bring you closer to me. Uh, Alright, look, there's a the fire pit. And, uh, yeah, I'm just going to put you right here. There we go. And, uh, that's pretty good. I know what. Oh. Now you're getting wet there, so come back up in here against the rock a little more. Ah. There we go. All right. Here, let me show you the picture. It's raining pretty hard.
let's uh here i'll give you the view over over in this direction that's where the springs are over there And, uh, all right, uh-oh, uh now we're getting hail. <laughs> Back up into it again. Uh, uh. I think the drier spot is over here. Uh, uh. Oh, yeah, right about here probably the best place to be. See the little hailstones? Yeah, they look, you can see them better against the brown earth here. Little tiny ones right now. They could get bigger. Uh-oh. Here comes the wind. This ain't good. Let me get back up in here a little more now. Ah. Only thing I worry about is like, you know, obviously there's some spiders living here. Hopefully they won't descend on me and start chomping on me. Looks like they might have moved away. It's probably late in the season for them. Those people in the hot springs were fine until it started hailing. Then they had to scramble. Comes another big gust of wind. I have to admit, I'm really surprised. Um, I was watching the sky. And I was expecting it to rain, but uh, not this hard, and this suddenly. And I love this. You know, nothing I'd rather be doing right now than sitting here under this rock watching the rain come down. Since I am lucky enough to be more or less under a rock, which gives me some protection. Although, right now, got another problem. See the water. Oh shoot, now let me wipe off the lens. So, the water is now running down the rock right to where my equipment is. And they still have a more or less dry little spot here, but as you can see, uh, this rock is not a very adequate shelter here, and I am getting dripped on. Still better than getting completely drenched.
my strawberries are getting wet and my water is getting wet. Oh. Good Lord, I've got some little dry pine needles here underneath me. Oh. I could start a little fire if I needed to. And I'm going to set you guys over here because it's pretty dry. Uh, let's see here, wait. Let me flip you around first. Okay. Uh, can you see me? Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of a dry spot there, sort of, for the phone. It doesn't look like it's going to get wet there. Uh. I am getting quite dripped on. At least I have some strawberries and I have some water here. So. Weather it out for a while. You know what's kind of nice is I can use this dripping rainwater to wash my strawberries. Yeah, that's refreshing. The storm is definitely starting to taper off a bit. I do have to watch out up here. There's a lot of poison ivy and poison oak. And I have to be aware of that. There's also a lot of edible plants up here. Like I pointed out, the strawberries. But there's also rose hips up here everywhere. Um, which, if you don't know, rose hips are a great source of vitamin C. And uh, you can pretty much uh, eat them right off the plant, you know, no problem, day or night. Uh, and they're not hard to identify because basically, uh, if you know how to identify a rose bush, uh, rose hips grow on a, a plant that looks like a rose bush. So it's pretty easy to spot. All right, sun's coming out. Uh, right now, Sun's coming out. Everything is refreshed from the beautiful rain. There's my little cave that I sheltered the storm under. Let me see if I can give you a wider shot. Yeah, there you go. That's where I sheltered the storm. And uh, I guess it's time to head back to the car.
I always used to, when walking around here, think about uh, like fairies or elves, little leprechauns and things. Because if you ever, if you were ever going to find one, you would find you would find it in a place like this. And that's where hot springs are up there. See a couple of birds soaring back and forth there on the winds that are hitting the cliffs. Now here's an example of a rose hip plant. Doesn't have any rose hips on it right now. Uh, but if you'll see, if you look closely, you see the thorns. That's how you know it's a rose bush, because it has thorns. <laughs> and uh, if you ever see any little red berries on them, they're totally edible. Yeah, that's where we were. <laughs> These magnificent cliffs. And making it back to the truck. Gosh, I hope it can get out. Everybody parked me in. Check it out. My bike and my kayak are still here. That's kind of cool. All right, well, that was your trip to Hamus Springs. I hope you all enjoyed it very much. And I hope you will not forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And we'll see you again in the next adventure. Don't forget to be hanging with Dave.